people might get high eating brownies at the Rand Paul Bake Sale. There it is. Welcome to the Lions of Liberty podcast. Here is your host, your guide, your shining beacon of liberty, Mark Claire. Welcome, welcome once again, my friends, to the Lions of Liberty podcast. This is episode 121, and that means you can find all the show notes for the show at lionsofliberty.com slash 121. And today's show is sponsored by our friends at libertymaniacs.com. It is election season, my friends, and there's no better time to check out all the great satirical and hilarious gear over at libertymaniacs.com, especially with their new electoral dysfunction clothing line. You can get 10% off your entire order by using discount code Lions of Liberty at checkout. That's libertymaniacs.com. Speaking of election season, speaking of politicians and all that great stuff, this is in fact another edition of Rand Paul Luses and Minuses. That's right, Rand Paul Luses and Minuses, where we take a look at all the comings and goings and machinations of that quasi-libertarian semi-hero or something or other known as Rand Paul. And here, as always, joining me is our resident Rand Paul expert, Mr. Brian McWilliams. Hey, Mark. Good to be back. Hello, all of you liberty lovers out there. It is good to be back. It's always good to be back here in the Lions of Liberty studios. I mean, I I live here, but... It's fun when other people pop in. I like for to a come chat. by once in a while. Yes, you know, I jump the gate, knock on the door. If the dogs are up, great. If they're not, I sneak in the window. It's wonderful. And then we talk about Rand Paul. That's right. And then sometimes, my girlfriend busts in. And say, what are you guys you're doing? Asleep. I just whisper about him in your ear. And then sometimes you gently wake up, but I, I just pet your forehead until Rand, you fall asleep Rand again. 2016. That's all that it explains. is. <laughs> but well, then we, I'm like minus, and you wake up in a in a cold sweat. <laughs> minus, minus, minus. <laughs> Yes, we do. Uh, This is, of course, for those that are not familiar with this little show we do, we actually dish out grades based on the very scientific Paul Luss or Minus system. It's somewhat self-explanatory. If we like something that Rand Paul did, we give it a... Paul Luss. And if we don't, we give it... A Minus. There you go. Pretty simple. And before we get into things today, there is a brief announcement to make because congratulations are in order for our man Brian here. He recently got engaged this weekend. And I I have to presume, well, congratulations, first of all. I'll let you you soak it in for a second. Oh, thank you. I was bathing in the glory. I, I have to presume that it's not a coincidence that this came together for you. Pretty recently after we started doing this podcast, is that what finally sealed the deal up well, for, for your relationship? With all of the ones and threes of dollars the podcast brings in from uh, from Lions of Liberty. The what? The podcast. Did I say podcast? You said podcat. And, podcat. And I'm not going to edit that uh, out. Did I, just, <laughs> did I just give away our new mascot, the Lions of Liberty podcast? The podcat. I think we need to <laughs> we do something do. with we this. We need it. Rawr, instead yeah. of the roar, it's just a rawr. It could be a lion or a lion cub, the podcat. Oh, boy. Anywho... Uh, licensed to me, so that all that money rolling in, I can finally afford my uh, my girlfriend now, a uh, fiance. So yes, thank you so much, man. All right, well, well speaking of marriage, that's a nice little uh, tie-in to uh, what what we'll talk about first with Rand Paul, and of course, as everyone knows, there was recently the Supreme Court ruling, which basically, for all intents and purposes, although I expect many legal battles uh, uh, still to come, anyway, uh, essentially legalizing. Marriage between whoever, men and women, women and women, men and men. Really, those are the only ones so far. We're, we're still working on <laughs> I don't dogs. Know, there's all and, sorts of different gender combinations. Well, if you listen to the Christian right, this is the downfall of society. I don't know. It seems a little silly to me, don't you? Think so? I completely concur. And uh, you know who else agrees? Despite his religious leanings, Rand Paul also agrees that uh, it's kind of ridiculous to, to worry about these things and that the Supreme Court should not be involved in this and nor should government be involved in marriage at all. And his solution, do you want to guess what it is? Um, I'm, I don't need to guess because I'm You're staring right. at the article in front of me, <laughs> so it would be kind of disingenuous. True. But, um... Well, it is private contracts. Hey, all right. All right, for private contracts. So, yeah, Rand, he he basically, you know, he's he's trying to keep, I think quite smartly, his opinion on the matter out of it because he's gotten slapped down before as we've discussed with kind of 
saying the wrong thing at the wrong time regarding gay marriage and, and getting involved with, you know, the uh, the different connotations that religion has in the place of that. But Rand has, in fact, always stated that he believes in private contracts where marriage is concerned between two individuals. And that way you could be, you know, whatever race you want to be, whatever gender you want to be, whatever transgender you want to be, as long as you have a contract with somebody else, that's your business, it's private, the government is not involved, and that's consensual between the two of you, which I think is a pretty good thing. I do as well. But even in this statement, even in this statement, he kind of still has to sneak in just a little bit of that. Well, this isn't really marriage, but whatever. Because, I mean, he does say, you know, the government should not prevent people from making contracts. But that does not mean that the government must confer a special imprimatur. I do not know that word. I'm just going to admit it <laughs> upon a new definition of marriage. <laughs> and, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I'm I, I, I glad that he uses is using this opportunity to sort of describe why governments just be out of marriage altogether. But mm-hmm. it's like he still has to sneak in his little own little point of view about the definition of marriage as if any certain religion or anybody can just have a, a monopoly on, on what exactly a marriage is right so i mean i'm, I'm sure that might have rankled you a little bit as well yeah minor. it did it, it was did. very minor it was I, I minor it rubbed me a little bit the wrong way but i think the overall you know if you look at the uh, the omnibus is that the right word i want to use here uh looking at it as Imprimatur, a whole omnibus, um, really omnibus all okay. these words just get your thesaurus out people in your dictionary um you know, I, I think it's a good thing. I agree. He does need a little bit, but he did a pretty good job of, of walking line and keeping his points straight about marriage contracts. And he also, I read into it, also made a bit of a point uh, about the fact that government does confer these kind of special statuses upon married people, which I object to, despite the fact that I'm going to be one. So, Absolutely. look, I'm not going to tell them to take away the benefits of being married, of course. I'll take those benefits uh, where I can get them. But you should not get them. You know? I think it all depends, too, because I mean, I've talked to some people that say they pay more taxes now that they're married. So Really? Cause they always, I don't know. I, I Everything I hear is it's benefit, 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 and i got to pop some children out, too. To well, I think a lot of those more, benefits uh... aren't financial, straight up, so, so much as like the right to visit in the hospital and all stuff like that. But you should be allowed to give anybody that right. If you exactly. want to contract it out, maybe you can't contract to hundreds of people. But I mean, but if I just meet this Walter the homeless guy and I'm like, you know what? If I'm sick and dying... Fella, I want you to be by my side. Why can't I just contract and make a legal statement saying this is the guy, Walter, the homeless guy, that I want to be by my side when I'm ill? You know, well, I, I don't see why that why why it even needs to be uh, just confined to people that say they're married or or whatever. Right. It's like yeah, exactly right. There's you know it should it shouldn't matter. You should be able to contract and have do whatever you want to do with whoever you want to do it with, and the government should be out of the out of the equation. So, Paul us for. That Paul Oster all of Ryan's statements, in my opinion. And I, too, will give him because it, it was a good opportunity to present the idea of, of just doing all of this through private contracts. So I will also give him a <laughs> Paul Oster. All right. Statement. Off to a good start this week, old Randy Pants. Do not forget we are really trying to make this Randy Pants hashtag going. So whenever right. you're talking about the show, whenever you're tweeting it out, just hashtag Randy Pants. Mm-hmm. It's simple stuff. Mm-hmm. And if Brian and I, we did actually get a few hashtags Randy Pants last time, so I, we, we're, oh, we're not alone. I'm here. So excited about that fact because you know what? That's that's another T-shirt we need to make. Yeah, so, so, so that's the marriage thing. The other thing, you know, this is obviously massive. Uh, we were talking a little bit before we started recording the podcast how we wanted to make sure we got this in here, but Rand's tax plan. Also was a major milestone the, the kind of fair and flat tax is what he's called it. That's right, fair and flat. Uh, and like before we talk about it, why don't we just quickly listen to a, a dramatic presentation of Rand's flat tax? This commercial I pulled up. We won't listen to the whole thing. We'll, we'll take a little sample here, no. so we can really get in the mood to talk flat tax. I'm running for president to defeat the Washington machine, and to do that, we have to drive a stake through the heart of the IRS and our terrible tax code. We need to tear it up and start over with a plan that's simple, fair, and cuts taxes for every single American. Let's start with a worker's tax cut. For most Americans, the biggest tax they pay is the FICA tax on their paycheck. And all anyone ever tries to do is raise that tax or pretend you aren't paying it. In my tax cut plan, the first thing we'll do is eliminate the worker's tax. That's right. It's gone. Zero. Nothing. That means every single working American will keep thousands of dollars more in their paycheck each year. But we're not stopping there. We will end corporate welfare and eliminate the army of lobbyists and tax lawyers gaming the system. 
So are you, are you, I don't know. Are you hyped up after hearing that? I'm ready for some flat tech. So I actually after using that. your comb to comb my arm hair down because it spiked up. The music that. was just starting to get dramatic and exciting, but it was um, really swelling. we're not going to listen to this whole thing because <laughs> we're just not. Yeah. So what time. do you think? Of, what do you think of the fair and flat tax, uh, Mark? Uh, well, I think <laughs> I think it's hard to call anything fair and flat when it's coercive. Uh, well, you can call it flat, I guess. <laughs> it's hard to call anything fair when it's coercive, when it's a, uh, you know, all our taxation systems are essentially coercive. Right. So the word fair might not fit in that context uh, in the broader sense. But compared to what we have now, it is a fair tax. If you are going to have a tax system and it is going to be coercive as it is now, and not based on the consent of property owners, yada, 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 as we advocate for, then the only fair method is to tax at the same level, at the same percentage, right. as far as I'm concerned. And and really, I mean, to me, to make something more fair, it has to be not just the same level necessarily, because, I mean, even in Rand's plan, he doesn't isn't going to start taxing people that aren't paying taxes now, like poor people. He's actually going to eliminate the payroll tax mm-hmm. for people that don't make that. And now, I mean, no matter how low your income level is, you still pay the payroll tax, and he's going to actually eliminate that. So this is a tax cut for yeah, the poor. Yeah, under 50000 nobody's uh, nobody's paying taxes. Yeah, basically. For so, households. Yeah, which is why I'm going to start cutting my own income so I don't <laughs> pay taxes. Just stop reporting it. Yeah. Yeah. But, but uh, it, I mean, it's certainly to have a anything remotely fair. It has to be very easy to understand and comprehend. And a bill like this, he's saying it can all be on one page, and that's the only kind of tax system that's remotely fair. We have a tax code that's I don't know how many pages it is, but it's tens and tens and tens and tens of thousands of pages, and it changes every year. And there's no way for any individuals to keep track of it or keep up with it. That's why we hire accountants. So at least I do, and uh, that's why you know that's why we have a whole burgeoning industry. I mean, H and R Block basically wouldn't exist. Uh, this might put H and R Block out of business. No, it's a good. So point. I'm sure they're they're probably against it. I'm sure there's a massive accounting lobby that is uh, that is really pushing against Rand Paul's plan. And the uh, the sort of. Um, the other aspect to this, which he mentions, is, you know, we're going to end cronyism. Mm-hmm. And, you know, people always complain. Progressives always complain about, oh, GM didn't pay tax this year. GE didn't pay tax this year. Well, Ram, this is going to close a lot of those loopholes and essentially make all these corporations pay the same amount. So the mom and pop business will have the le- playing field leveled a little right. bit. At let, least me, with- let me clarify there exactly what Mark's talking about is that if people aren't familiar with the tax plan Rand's proposing, it is a 14.5% tax rate across everything for everybody. So that means that corporate taxes as well are applied. So 40.5 down from 39%. Now that's interesting because we have the highest corporate tax in the world right now, 39%. I I think it's third actually. Okay, well, whatever. <laughs> Edit that out or don't. <laughs> no, who cares? We have very but high tor- corporate taxation. Yeah, I think point. it's it's third right now, but yeah, it's it's incredibly huge. And, you know, what this is going to do is actually, you know, okay, we're going to say we're going to bring it from 39 to fit 14.5%. So, yes, it's a tax cut for many companies. But for companies like GE that didn't actually pay taxes and get other companies like that that take unfair advantage of all the regulations and all the little intricacies in the tax code that they can afford to do with an army of lawyers and an army of accountants, well, a lot of that stuff is going to be eliminated. They're still able to write off you know, certain business expenses and that kind of thing, but a lot of these loopholes that allow them to get away essentially tax-free will be gone. So really, progressives should cheer this thing too. Tax cut for the poor. Boom. How's that a bad thing? Most progressives that I know would rather tax the poor and make minimum wage laws to uh to I mean, it seems like a whole silly thing when you could just stop taxing them and with with pretty much the same result and not distort the economy it's in so many weird raise, ways exactly but for what it will be is for a lot of companies and that's this is where i expect a lot of the resistance to come from because most reasonable people i think should be able to look at this and, and think this is a better system than we have now but i don't think that a lot of these large corporations are going to think it's a better system for them because their advantage is the the sort of the disastrous, insane, intricate tax code. That's their advantage because they have the resources to work around this stuff. Whereas mom and pop setting up shop. Hey, am I rhyming now? Am I rapping? I don't know. Mom and pop setting up shop don't have the this kind of army of lawyers. They don't have this the the, the resources at their disposal to to get around the tax levels now. So uh, it's certainly an improvement by far. I think. What about you? Or the other thing we could go. A lot of my friends, or I know one of our mutual friends, recently tatted to us is Bernie Sanders. Ninety percent. 90% tax on corporations. Yeah. How about that? I'm sure they're going to love that. I mean, the corporate is just going to be head over heels, right? You yeah. know, they might because they can actually probably, under his Unless tax code, tax you can code. probably you can probably still get away with paying, you know, zero. Right, exactly. Whereas, it's trying to, trying to find the silverfish in, the, uh, in your 1,000-page tome in the bookshelf. 
But no, I, I think it's a great thing. I, I, you know, again, this is a step forward. It's not going to be perfect, but it's, a, I think, a big step forward, despite the fact that, yes, big business is going to take a hit. However, as we mentioned, the mom and pop shops are going to thrive. And, this, you know, starting a small business in America with the corporate tax rate is so difficult. So many companies going out of business. And especially with the, um, you know, the minimum wage rate going up, as we know, in California, it went up, you know, it's supposed to well, go yeah, up to here, $15 here in LA, it's coming an up hour. To 15 an hour from nine fifty or something. Yeah, which is already, very, you know, pretty high comparatively. So it's like, my God. So, you know, under this plan, small business actually has a chance to thrive again. And uh, it's going to encourage more people to say, OK, I can handle this now. You know, I can, I can deal with this. I don't have to pay 40 percent of my income through you know, the taxes. So I think overall, uh, I think it's a great a great plan. I'm interested to see more of the details, and I want to see the actual one page. Well, hopefully, yeah. I mean, if it should only be a page. So as soon as we get that thing, we'll, we'll check yeah, it out. We will review it. Paging Rand Paul. Just uh, fax us a copy to 1-800-LIBERTY. Hashtag Randy Pants. Send it through. That's what we have. Encourage him. Tweet right, a libertarian. But, but again, I mean, look, a lot of libertarians might criticize this plan. I've seen libertarians criticize this plan. Well, what can't we criticize? I, I, and I mean, it's like, yeah, you, if, if, if you went from no taxes or no coercive taxes to this, it would be terrible. But if you're going from our system we have now to this, I mean, I don't know how any remotely sane human being that doesn't have just a, a pure anti-rant agenda can actually say that this is not a massive improvement over what we have. Mm -hmm. So... That being said, Paul Us. Paul Us. Double Paul Us. Double P's. Paul Us's are pouring in. <laughs> it's, so. it's raining Paul Us's. We're going to have to find a Hallelujah. <laughs> we're going to uh, have to find a minus. There's, I, I know there, there's, uh, there's a minus. There, there were a couple minuses, actually. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about one. Uh, again, this is a... Uh, you don't have to go into super detail on it, but... You you know I'm sure you're familiar with as many people are familiar with the tragedy of the Charleston church shooting, wherein um, you know a white man walked into a church and uh, shot up. It was primarily a black church, so you know terrible happening. Of course, this event happened uh, the same day that Rand Paul was speaking at an event for Faith and Freedom Coalition in Washington D.C. And I'll say uh, I'll I'll briefly read you what he said. So he says we had a shooting this morning in South Carolina. What kind of person goes to the church and shoots nine people? There's a sickness in our country. There's something terribly wrong, but it isn't going to be fixed by your government, which is true. Uh, it's people straying away. It's people not understanding where salvation comes from. So that, uh -oh. in my opinion, was uh -oh. a bizarre <laughs> statement to make. <laughs> salvation. So where does your salvation, you know, not understanding where your salvation come from, and that's why you're shooting up buildings. I, I understand the man was talking at a faith and freedom coalition, right. but... If we've learned anything, Rand is in the media. They're concentrating on it. People are actively looking for things to tag him on. And he goes after saying, you know, after making slip-ups about the Baltimore uh, riots where he had said, you know, don't stop the train in Baltimore. Uh, you know, he gets in trouble for making these, these kind of foolish comments. And he makes another one here by making this bizarre wedging this issue into a broader issue and trying to make it work on the same day. And it just sounds insensitive and foolish. Yeah. So... I agree. <laughs> that one is a minus. I mean, I mean, look, we can say it sounds crazy and bizarre to us, but to some of the constituency he's trying to reach out to, it might sound like, yeah, of course. It's well, all that salvation thing. Yeah, but he, as you put, as I put it, the salvation in there. I'm sure the the rest of the gibberish was fine. You just have to bookend it with salvation and something else about religion. I'm sure they're probably like, oh, is yeah, this yeah, a, okay. It could makes this perhaps be a Rand Paul one sentence earlier situation? I could say, I think it was a Rand Paul one sentence earlier situation. Rand Paul one sentence earlier. Rand Paul one, one sentence, sentence earlier. earlier. Yeah, if he had just said there's something terribly wrong and it isn't going to be fixed by government, right. all right, we'd be good. Yeah, we agree. But then he says, no, it's people not understanding where salvation comes yeah, from. It feels so. straying away. One sentence earlier, once again, we'd be okay. Exactly. Rand then it's a solid libertarian earlier. message. So that that was a, a minus. I did mention in the article I wrote this a few weeks ago that he did, however, make a good mea culpa in a way by donating funds from a white supremacist that were donated to his campaign and a bunch of other Republican campaigns to um, a foundation that was giving money towards the victims, the families of the victims in the Charleston shooting. So that now, that, now that's interesting because that is a different stance than his father took in similar situations in the past with this campaign. I know he had situations where white supremacists had donated to him. And when it was like outed in the media and they found out about it, 
It's kind of silly because, like, obviously these candidates aren't, aren't sitting there at a computer yeah, watching their funds coming and in, doing a background. I mean, you receive funds and you use it for your campaign. You're not, like, looking at – but, you know, when this stuff does come out, well, then there is somewhat of a PR issue, I guess, with these things. And Ron's stance was always, well, look, if this white supremacist is giving me money – why on earth would I give it back to him? Because that would help him to promote more white supremacy, right. whereas all I'm going to do is promote freedom. So if he gave me that money, thinking that I was going to do something to support him, well, I'm not, other than his right to free speech, which he supports for everybody. So it's better for me to keep the money and do and spread my freedom message with it, which I, I, I agree with the viewpoint of not giving him the money. Pro- I agree. But, hey, if people want to give me money that are uh, yeah, for any sort of yeah. cause, I'll keep and, it. If any racist out there. If, yeah, if, racist. Racist. Uh, uh, who a, else? Anything that, if you're anti uh, gay, yeah, fine. Just send me your money. <laughs> if I'll you're filled with hate, send us some send, cash. <laughs> if you hate anything, please send us money, care of lines. And we will not return it. <laughs> we will <laughs> we'll unaf- keep it and use it to make more podcasts like the wonderful one you're listening to right now. Exactly. So if you, if any haters out there want to fund our podcast. Maybe we can get a, a save a big cat and that can be podcast wow Ooh, all right we're tying everything in here yeah. cool but uh, it, it is a pretty good politically savvy move i'll say and and, and i like the fact because I, th- I think it would have been stupid if you gave the money back to the guy because why give it back to, to why do you want a white supremacist to have more money to do his supremacy with or i don't know what whatever they do like hold, i don't know they hold, hold like bingo know, bingo they, night you, or gotta, you gotta buy a lot of sheets that's all i know a lot of sheets but it, what he did was great he gave it to the the families of of the you know the, the charleston shoot sh- <clears throat> charleston church shooting victims. <laughs> you know, i know you almost said charleston shoe there that's hard to I say heard, I heard the charleston shoe it. victims this week <laughs> Yes. Not to make light of, of the massacre, but so Charleston I, I shoes think are Rand good. found yeah, a pretty good middle ground here, um, and kind of maybe learning from his father's mistakes. Because no matter how we, much we might buy into Ron's logic, in that case, I think Rand is is making the more politically savvy move here, yeah. and it's a, doing a good thing. He's 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 giving money to the to the families of of this terrible tragedy. So once again, I will give this man a Paulus. Yeah, this, well, let's Paulus him here. there. Paul Lusser ran there. What else should we talk about? You know, I don't want this thing to go too long, but... Hey, man, I got all night. <laughs> do our rush? listeners... What, do you got a wedding to plan or something? Yeah. Come on. I haven't even, we haven't even talked about the date yet. All right, I'll, I'll tell this you what... happened um, two days ago. I'm still hungover. <laughs> I'll tell you what I want to talk about. I Lay want to talk about... Rand's comment towards the Clintons. He's making, oh, well, it's really towards, well, it's towards Bill and Hillary, really. That's always a good time. What, why don't you tell us what Rand said here about um, about the Clintons recently? Well, this one, I'll tell you, honestly, just, it, it made me so happy when I read it because there's, yeah, as I mentioned, there's not much you can say that, uh, you know, about Hillary, about Bill. That's negative that I will not agree with and, and applaud. And Rand Lucy called about again. He's really going on the offensive here against Hillary, which he needs to do. But he's uh, attacking her because Bill and Hillary both supported a lot of legislation that went after the drug war. And that directly impacts a lot of black Americans. Uh, as we all know, the, the laws in place and the justice system is not fair. It's not equal. You know, it, it should be under law. However, it's not applied equally. There's a lot of. Uh, specific laws that target black men. And, and for instance, um, Rand Paul went after them and, and Ritzy said that, quote, unquote, Bill Clinton pre- presided over the incarceration of an entire generation of young black men. Uh, he went then went on to say that they are being put in jail at a rate never before seen in history because of the war on drugs. Now, Clinton did not start the war on drugs. Let's be clear about that. Nixon started that. But Clinton's did sign into law a lot of much harsher penalties yes. uh, for the war, you know, people that were caught with marijuana. And, and they other were drugs. more than happy to do it. And, you oh, know, yeah. the Clintons are the ultimate political animals. They used to be against gay marriage, both of them, just like Barack Obama was. And now they're totally oh, for flipping it. and flopping. So, right. Everything's great. They used to be for harsher penalties for drug crimes. Now they all come out and say, well, this is actually a disparity in the system. And, and look, in fairness, you know, I, I'm all about people changing their views and realizing they were wrong. And it's possible. The problem with people like the Clintons is I don't know. It's impossible to know which was the right view. You know, which is the which is the mea culpa? Is was their b- view before the one the real one? And right, now and they're they now they're smelling the, the political the wins. War. Right. Yeah, no, exactly. But that's thing. They're political animals. So if you're constantly changing and, and putting your finger in the air to see which way the wind's blowing, you can't be trusted to have any real opinion. And maybe they don't even know what their real opinion is at this point. 
It's like <laughs> they've, con- they've, con- they've lied to themselves so much they don't even know what they it's actually It's Robert believe. Downey Jr. in Tropic Thunder where he doesn't know if he is an Australian <laughs> or a black guy or a whatever. Well, Bill priest. Clinton is the first black president. Right? So, that's <laughs> so, what they, they so, so they tell me. But there's another thing, too, that Rand said. And, and this was a candidate for – it almost became a, oh, my God, what did Rand say one sentence earlier moment. But it's, it's actually, actually okay. And this was that Rand Paul then later where it said that the drug war and these, and these legislation was put into place was basically uh, Jim Crow. Was what he called it. it was a modern day Jim Crow and the new Jim Crow, and it's in truth that's pretty accurate because when you look at the drug war, you're sending people to jail. They're now becoming felons, as we know. Your your, your right to vote is taken away. So essentially, you're again throwing you know black Americans under the under the bus here, not allowing them to vote. Just like with Jim Crow laws, it was impossible. This is the modern day. Um, I don't even know what you call it. A modern, modern day, day iteration. Uh, yeah, manifestation. I mean- yeah, and that's like, you know, it might be a politically incorrect term to use, especially for a white politician, but that doesn't make it inaccurate. It's obviously not the same as Jim Crow. It's specifically having laws that divide and, and you know, make you know African-Americans a second-class citizens, as Jim Crow more literally did. But, I mean... Well, the effect is very similar. The effect is very similar, exactly. I mean, if you look at the drug laws and you look at the rates of drug use between whites and blacks, they're pretty even, and yet the arrest rates are sky high for blacks and not so much for whites. Right. The application of the law is essentially making blacks secondhand citizens where it's applied in the war on drugs. All right. Let's wrap the show up by talking about something that um, I like to talk about. segue. And that is, uh, that's weed. There you go. <laughs> Rand was all about the weed this past week. And, um, why don't you just explain? There's a couple kinds of weed. See, yeah, yeah. Rand's not a one weed kind of fella. He's dipping into a couple kinds of weed here. So uh, we're not talking about sativa versus whatever. We're talking indica. about indica. I mean, I, I, read, you for I read in a magazine there you recently. <laughs> the two different types. Um, but yeah, Rand actually signed on a guy that was a part of his father's campaign, a gentleman by the name of Doug Weed. So what do we know about this Doug Weed? character well doug weed was a part of ron paul's campaign actually which didn't necessarily help considering he didn't win presidency but he not only was part of ron paul's campaign but he also was an advisor to reagan yes ronald reagan darling of the gop and even libertarians still look at reagan and uh and speak of him fondly many a times which in truth, kind of confuses me uh, now and then. But, yeah, Doug Weed is joined on Rand Paul as a senior advisor and also as some sort of, I think, religious liaison. Li- uh, some, he, Yeah, he does Bordering have... Bordering on a minus now. He died, I know. He does have some sort of religious indication, though, as well with this title. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm struggling with the name. But, anyway... It's an interesting. Uh, it's an interesting appointment for Rand, and I think it's a good one. Senior advisor and religious liaison. Religious is the official li- title, right? Which I don't know exactly what that. It means. means he goes and talks to all the. Yeah. Does it mean he should handle all the religion? Oh, here questions? you go. See here you go. Because he worked with it says here an evangelical outreach with both George H. W. Bush and George W. Bush. Mm-hmm. So you've got Doug Weed here joining again, who's really a dyed in the wool. You know, you look at it, he's been involved in all these GOP efforts for mainstream candidates and successful mainstream candidates. So this is I, I think a great addition. It it may not be one that's gonna have a massive impact. Uh, right off the bat, but it does help with fundraising where we know Rand is having a little bit of concern. So, so you're going to give this a... I'll give that a Paul Us. <laughs> All right. Because the show is boring if we always agree. <laughs> I'm, no, no, that's not the reason. First of all, I'm not necessarily a 100% Rand supporter, so I'm not going to judge everything necessarily on if it's better for his campaign or not. But, you know, um, I don't know. Uh, I, I like Doug Weed. I've seen him in some interviews. He's an interesting character. Um, he's also said some stuff I don't totally agree with. Seems to be a big Abraham Lincoln fan, which I found interesting. I saw an interview where he's hmm. praising Lincoln to no end. I mean, I'm not really looking to get into that debate on this episode <laughs> right now. But uh, I think um, a lot of libertarians agree Lincoln has some problems. Yep. yep. And I know it's not this is not related to Rand's campaign, but the associations with certain neocons, George Bush, George H.W. Bush... Um, it gives me a little little queasy feeling, a little, and, and I, I think Doug Weed's all right. Yeah. And ma- you know what? I actually want to get Doug Weed on the show, so maybe I can. So observe, maybe you don't maybe trash I him can, and drag his Maybe I can. No, I'm not trashing anybody. I mean, I'm just I, maybe I need to learn more about Doug Weed. But if I'm just looking at the biography, this biography gives me a little more pause than it does maybe. Curious. Yeah, well, that's I understand the uh, the hesitation, and again, it's that's a minus, by the way. Uh, minus, but it's a tepid one. It's, it's it's. I'm just I will I'll wait and see. No, but, it's, uh, it's understandable because I had the same a little bit of the same consternation. Yeah, 
the fact that Ron Paul brought him on board is interesting. Again, that was in the context of his campaign. And this is the same thing with Rand. I, you know, I don't know if Rand and, and Doug Weed are palling around outside of, of the campaign front. But the fact that he is coming on board, I think, will lend a little bit more cred, or, uh, cred to, to Rand's chances for fundraising from GOP crowds. And I'm looking at it through that way. If he's going to move this forward, then fine. I maybe I shouldn't because I'm I'm supposed to grace from a libertarian lens, but as the as the campaigns rolled along and Rand has become the front runner as far as libertarians are concerned right now uh, as a, a viable candidate, I'm looking as you know this this makes sense. I think this will actually help him. So you know, fine, all good, all good with me. So Paul us from me there. All right, that's one Paul us, one minus for me. We yeah. have a, a slight divide here in the studios. All right, and the other weed that Rand yeah. Paul is the more di- important weed, the, the I much think. more important weed is that. Well, why don't you tell us? You're, the, right. you're the guy here. Yeah, let me lay let me lay the law down here. So Rand, this is a great move. I, I, one of the things I was really excited about that he did, and this just happened, you know, very recently. So Rand went actually and and talked to the Colorado Legal Weed Growers Association. Canada's Business Summit at the Denver Convention Center. That's what it was. So, you know, obviously Denver has uh, has legalized marijuana. Uh, kudos to you, Denver, leading the state and leading the nation. Colorado. Colorado. Overall. Sorry, not Denver. Yeah, Colorado. So I'm Ra- sure Denver did lead the way, though. I'm <laughs> yeah, I did. Pretty, pretty damn sure on that So, one. Uh, Colorado, good job. So, Rand went there, spoke with these people, and raised money. The first candidate to raise money from the marijuana industry. And he's not backing down from it. He's happy he spoke to them. And he's really been leading the way as far as marijuana, uh, you know, looking at, at prohibition on marijuana and trying to really roll that back and make it legal, uh, as far as you know, medically, at least. Uh, Rand is leading the way, and he actually has the highest grade of any candidate, beating out even Bernie Sanders, that progressive uh, darling, with an A minus grade. So you know it's pretty amazing. I think he's he's tapped into a an industry that not a lot of politicians are going to be going after, especially on the GOP front. I think is the only one that has a chance of tapping that money, and it's really going to help with this fundraising. I mean, I don't. You don't think Mike Huckabee is going to be uh, like hanging out with stoners raising money secretly? <laughs> if, if only Fred Thompson was still in the races, like so many years ago, I could see him doing it. You know, you said there's there's no other candidates that are going to be fighting for these dollars, and you you may be right. At least among the GOP, I can't imagine GOP anyone. definitely not. But uh, I think uh, our our man. Well, I don't know if he's our man. He's, he hasn't even officially entered the race but um gary johnson of the libertarian party he's not in it though like you not can't yet count but on him he is he is expected to to enter the race and he is actually involved um he actually has an investment he's working with in the marijuana industry so he will be that's interesting catering for that money as well but we'll see if, if yeah. the if the marijuana money goes more to the mainstream guy the Rand paul that has maybe the quote-unquote better chance of winning kind of thing or if well, they'll say we want Gary. He's for full legalization, no questions asked. Whereas Look, Rand Paul wants to scale things back in, you know, the gateway drug kind of way. So. Weed smoke could pass around and, and I think it fuses over both sides of the aisle. I think a lot of people protest weed, but when it comes down to it, whether you're GRP or Democrat as a voter, you probably still enjoy smoking a little doob now and then. <laughs> at least, but I think a lot of people do. I don't know. From some very unscientific polls we did right. this past weekend. Um, <laughs> Asking people in the streets <laughs> yeah. of Venice. So, Excuse me, but, sir. Are you high? Yes. All right. There we go. <laughs> Which way are you going to vote? I don't know, man. What the, yeah, no, but I mean, look, this is an issue I think that, that on either side, Which people will say, cool you know what, I'm weed, just for, for, you know, ending the prohibition on marijuana. So he could raise funds just from that side of things in general. Plus, think about all the, you know, the marijuana dispensaries. Those people are going to be backing Rand as well. Do you think they'll have a bake sale for Rand, these guys? <laughs> That's the punchline, and I don't know. I'm just saying people might get high eating brownies at the Rand Paul Bake Sale. There it is. All right. Well, I think that's about enough today. Yeah, because it's getting very hot in here. It's getting very it's hot. hot in here. I'm We're, tired. We record this podcast in a, a very small room in my house. It's a sauna at the Lions of Liberty. Uh, but before Resort. we go. In case people enjoyed the show and might want to find more, where can they find all the editions of your Rand Pluses and Minuses column, which comes out every single Tuesday, by the way, as well as past editions of this show? Would you care to inform these? Sure, find people you can find it at Lions of Liberty forward slash Rand. Lions of Liberty. You hate, you hate dot com. com. Sorry, well, they, they might think we're a government agency com. and that we're a dot com. Uh, Lions of Liberty dot com dot forward slash Rand. And then you can, of course, find all episodes of the Lions of Liberty podcast at lionsofliberty.com slash podcast. There's so many things you can find us. Facebook.com slash Lions of Liberty. Find us on Twitter at Lions of Liberty. You can hear the show every single Monday and Thursday here at lionsofliberty.com. 
on iTunes, on Stitcher, all the places you find podcasts. And of course, you can also hear us on our partners on the radio on the weekends, libertytalk.fm, 6 p.m. Eastern Saturday and Sunday, as well as the Liberty Radio Network, lrn.fm, throughout the week. And this coming Monday, I've got an exciting guest, a gentleman who lives out here in Los Angeles. He is known as the photographer of the libertarian movement, or he's not known as that. It's just kind of what he's become, uh, a guy by the name of Judd Weiss. Had a great conversation with him, and I, I'm looking forward to that this Monday. So come back this coming Monday to listen to my talk with Judd Weiss. Until then, and until maybe about a month or so from now when we do this episode of Rand Policies and Minuses, once again, myself, Brian McWilliams, signing off. Until next time, folks, live long! And live free. Find your salvation one sentence earlier. Salvation. <laughs> <laughs>